everyone. Um, it's going to be a very informal gathering, so I'm going to start not having any kind of presentation uh, and just talk like that. Uh, my name is Subhashish. I work with the Wikimedia Foundation and the Center for Engineering and Society uh, in India. Um, I've been a Wikipedian since um, last five and a half years, um, and uh, I also have been working with the uh, foundation in a, uh, in a full time position uh, for quite some time. So, uh, even though I'm not from the legal background, I have some understanding about the uh, copyright problems uh, on Wikipedia. And um, so, the way we are planning to do this session is uh, Frederico and I would be uh, talking for some time, and then we will keep it open for you all to come up with the problems, the kind of problems that you might be facing in your countries, and and how we could tackle them. So instead of this being a you know a hardcore training session, it's going to be more of interactive and uh, and collaborative and participatory. And, and so please uh, feel free to stop us in between and ask any questions if you have. Um, yeah, Federico. I am Federico. Uh, I'm the, the public lead of Creative Commons in Italy, and uh, yeah, we are we are working quite a lot with uh, uh, Wikimedia, in particular uh, Wikimedia Italy, to uh, sort out a few issues. Uh, we, we we do have some interesting issues concerning uh, the uh, reproduction of cultural heritage, monuments, and and so on. Some big issue related with Wikilogs monuments. So I wanted to add some comments about these uh, specific issues together with uh, uh, Panorama Right. And uh, since we are just uh, a few people and probably with uh, different specific interests and coming from, from different countries, which also matters because copyright uh, and related rights are still say, territorial rights, even if very standardized, uh, maybe we can, we can start with a, a very quick uh, round table to, to just know where are you from and which kind of expectations do you have from this session so we can adapt a little bit to, to, to your interest if, if we are able to do that. So you don't know if you want to introduce yourself briefly in terms of what you expect from, from this session. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Arne Bossing. I'm with the Dutch Wikimedia chapter as a project lead. So I'm involved in a couple of education and plan uh, projects. Um, I'm always looking sort of for general information, so that, that's especially part that I'm interested in. Um, and I know since it's early morning, <laughs> I can just list whatever specific topics I have, but it will definitely somewhere pop up. My name is Mikhail, I'm from the Russian Wiki uh, community. Um, Why I'm here, uh, my interest uh, to know more. Yes, I know uh, the uh, basic of copyright, but when the um, my expectation to know more about how uh, different uh, like regimes such as public domain, such as fair use uh, and uh, different type of create, uh, license such as Creative Commons can be applicable for different projects. Maybe you share some interesting tools which uh, Wikimedia can use and uh, my interest uh, as well to know more, how, for example, I work with the pupils and they're very something like uh, it's a, it's a, this is a pupils, it is not uh, uh, lawyers and how maybe you provide some cases or examples in your work how to explain copyright very short and not our body. Ordinary people, so that's my expectation. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm uh, Mari, I'm from uh, Wikimedia East, uh, from Estonia, and uh, I'm here, you know, as you said earlier, to just get more, like, more of a background and more of a general knowledge of copyright, because uh, we have been working on uh, trying to work out freedom of panorama in Estonia, so I think that's a very important, like, framework-wise for that. Hello, this is Bashat from Turkey. Um, I am very familiar with uh, copyright issues. I want to talk here just uh, something, and I'm the only person from Turkey, and I want to bring something uh, about it uh, to my friends. But I might have to leave a little bit earlier. Thank you for my from Estonia, and uh, copyright is for me very image related and so. To understand what can be commons and not, and 
what the copyright probably really says and trying to find out all the common versions of the copyright and so on. I am from Wikimedia Ukraine and uh, I'm a leader of Wikimedia Ukraine volunteering. Um, and uh, okay, our main goal is to have freedom of panorama as soon as possible, and that's why I want to visit the all sessions which are connected to copyrights, freedom of panorama, etc. Again, to receive something because copyrights uh, law is not my um, professional law. I'm a human rights activist, so it is something that I can receive some something from you, I guess. Uh, my name is Ewan, I'm from Scotland, um, I work at the University of Edinburgh as the Wikimedian there um, and I'm just looking to get a better context for the way we're going to operate together at the University of Edinburgh because we're working with the library and archive collections and looking to release those collections but it would be good to understand the copyright sort of context in the first instance uh, but also, you know, just running image thons generally. Just like. Thank you. I actually something popped up. Uh, are you going to say anything about the OTRS system? Uh, I'm sorry, the OTRS system? Yeah. Uh, well, we could, we could, it or, or we could have this. I mean, this is quite open. We haven't really, you know, have a very strict schedule. So um, we're open to discussing about these things. All right. Uh, I'm Jake Rogers. I'm one of the attorneys for the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, I specialize in doing copyright law, so I'm a bit curious. Well, yeah, so. <laughs> 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 and specialist. Um, and offer any help or questions that really come up. Okay. Thank you so much. So we'll start uh, with the kind of problem that um, a lot of Wikipedians uh, in general uh, face with, uh, in relation to copyright. And um, so, you know, as Wikipedians, we always run the Wikipedia pages uh, with more pictures, uh, pictures that make sense, um, and, and, you know, there are, there are a lot of Wikipedia articles which don't have any picture on, or any kind of diagrams or representations, all that, um, and, and the Wikimedia community in general um, has been, you know, uh, thinking about it a lot. That how we can have uh, more pictures, more relevant pictures in the Wikipedia articles. Um, so, um, on when it comes to text, it's quite, it's quite easy because you can always paraphrase and rephrase the text and then use different uh, sources in the Wikipedia articles. When it comes to um, pictures, there's no way you can uh, make it simple and easy. Uh, a picture is uh, copyrighted and it's copyrighted. You know, if you make a copy, you make uh, uh, you draw it, you redraw it. It's still copyrighted. So it's, it's very complex, and it's never in the white or black area. It's always a very gray area. Um, and uh, a lot, a lot many times, we don't have pictures of uh, living or dead people. When it comes to living people, uh, it's more complicated on Wikipedia because uh, you can't really use the copyrighted images as as fair use on on Wikipedia. Um, whereas at times you can, you know, if, if you don't find pictures uh, of a dead person uh, and and there is no free image, you can still use a low resolution image as free as a fair use image on Wikipedia. So similarly, a lot of Wikipedians are not really educated about uh, the problems that that they might face with copyright. Um, for example, uh, if you're taking a picture and there is a logo or a trademark. Um, say IBM or Lenovo, if, even if it's a text, uh, it's a piece of text written in a font, uh, it's still copyrighted. It's copyrighted. It's a trademark of the company. And if you have so something like that, and that covers twenty percent of the image, that's copyrighted. Uh, a lot of Wikipedians uh, won't even realize about this while taking pictures. Um, um, you know, uh, so and this is a this is a rectangle, and if you you know make like four uh, quadrants out of it, and the logo covers more than uh, one one of the quadrants. That's copyrighted. You know, that's that's a practical way. Of, what about five? Well, no, you make four parts of this, and if it covers more than one part, that's more than twenty five percent, and that's copyrighted. So to, to to be sure, I mean, with a rule of thumb, yeah, uh, which, which 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 could even work, work, but in principle. Uh, uh, the, the, the matter is whether something is uh, original and creative or not, and not how outdated the revolution or, or things like like that. Uh, 
you, depending on the country, you may have, uh, <laughs> let's say, standard behavior and practices according to which uh, very low uh, resolution images uh, are considered to be, let's, let's say, a reusable under doctrines which are similar to fair use in the US, uh, and so especially if you are using them for, 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 for some, uh, let's say, teaching or knowledge or documentation related purposes, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that uh, something bigger or smaller is uh, co copyrighted, this is not technically, te te technically sound. Uh, if, if about uh, uh, pictures, by the way, you also have a quite a, a diversified situation depending on uh, countries. So, uh, it, it, I, I agree with Subhashi that, uh, as they say, to be on the safe side, uh, if you are, if you are uh, not sure about the specific rules in a country, unfortunately, nowadays, it's, uh, it's a decent assumption to assume that uh, everything is copyrighted, but this is not really uh, the, the case again, uh, for instance, for pictures, uh, uh, if they are simple pictures in several uh, European countries and also other countries in the world, you just have a protection lasting 20 years, which, which is much shorter than, uh, than the full copyright uh, protection, which is, uh, well, depending on the country of, of, of the world, uh, it collapses, uh, let's say, 50 years after the death of the author, normally 70 years. So, I agree, the safe and easy assumption to oversimplify is almost everything which is minimally creative or expressive of uh, the mind of somebody, uh, the, the, the intellectual production of somebody is probably, arguably, corporate protected. Uh, there are some exceptions and limitations letting you use for some purposes uh, corporate protected stuff, but these limitations are typically quite narrow depending on the country. They may be more or less flexible. For instance, in the US, fair use is more flexible than exceptional limitation in the most uh, other countries where instead of common law, you have, um, let's say, civil law, so the exception should be written very, very detailed, uh, written on the law. Uh, and uh, for pictures, which are a very interesting topic uh, uh, for uh, Wikipedians, Wikipedians uh, uh, to upload them on Commons or to use them on uh, Wikipedia pages, uh, uh, copyright applies frequently if the picture is minimally created. Of course, if you are scanning a notebook with a camera in most countries of the world, this is not a creative picture. Uh, this is not copyright protected at all, for instance, in Italy, for uh, But if you are photographing yeah, the, the Wikimania uh, gathering, uh, so facts of social life and, 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 and so on, these things are typically copyright protected in some countries. <coughs> they are not considered very original, they're just like a kind of documentary pictures, they are just protected for uh, 20 years instead of the very long, let's say 70 years after the death of the author term. Uh, but it, it's true if a, a picture is a recent, a picture taken yesterday, it doesn't make any difference for you to know whether it's a, an original copyrighted work or let's say it's a mere picture which in, in certain countries is just protected for, 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 for 20 years. So it was just to, to nuance a little bit uh, what you said, which a little bit, uh, um, which may vary a little bit depending on the country. Uh, so, so then if you have more, uh, of course we don't know about uh, the corporate law of every country of the world, so we we'll stay on, on the safe side, <laughs> uh, let's say, but uh, uh, it's probably worth uh, uh, spending some some time in, in interacting with uh, uh, corporate lawyers in your own country to dis discover whether you have some uh, specific uh, leeway, for instance, concerning pictures. In most European countries, for instance, it's the Berne Convention. The, you, sorry, yeah, the Berne Convention is. Uh, sorry, you mentioned the Berne Convention. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is uh, uh, let's say the, the minimum common denominator of. The minimum. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean. I mean I would say that every country in the world is part of a burn convention. In before the uh, when, when there were the, the Taliban, Afghanistan was an exception. It's not anymore. So I would say really almost any country of the world is, is 
part of the Berne Convention. Correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. Oh, that's, but, that's right. Although the Berne Convention itself usually doesn't uh, establish the law in any given country. No, of course. It's, it's a minimum standard. Yeah, you I should, should do and the minimum is already pretty, pretty high in the okay. sense that, for instance, the minimum term of, of protection which is established by the Berne Convention is uh, the, the one I mentioned of uh, uh, 50 years after the death of, of the author. So, so you, you cannot have a copyright term shorter than that uh, for, for good copyright. Yeah, so like you mentioned also, there's the 20-year exception for things that are not that creative. So yeah. Different, like I'd say, you have to look at the law of the the country you're in because sometimes, like the Berne Convention sets a minimum standard, but different countries um, have different standards for like what qualifies for copyright and what yeah. other ancillary rights there might be that could be uh, shorter for some photographs, for example. Yeah. Yeah, for instance, I have an X-ray image from my doctor, so uh, can, can I reuse it in Wikipedia or not? Because it's medical, but uh, it's also an image. Yeah, I had this, that, this question. Oh, yeah. Or X-ray or You have it. I mean, I mean, for sure, the, the vast majority of judges all around the world would not consider that a, a creative photograph. Still, in several countries, I don't know, it's in Switzerland, you, you, you do have some kind of a, a protection for simple photographs. In this case, uh, if we assume that uh, the, the X-ray picture, let's say, is taken in a, 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 a kind of technical exercise, you don't want to express yourself taking the X-ray, you want to do uh, the, the te technical work uh, to reproduce in, in, the, in the most precise uh, technical way, uh, let's say, uh, some, some signs of a pathology or something like, uh, 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 like, uh, like that. Uh, in, in some countries, uh, it, it would be in the, in the, in the public dom uh, do, do, uh, domain. Uh, in, in other countries, uh, most it could be considered a simple picture protected for, for 20 years. <laughs> it makes quite a lot of difference. Uh, uh, but, uh, so I, 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 I would uh, talk with some uh, corporate lawyers uh, from your own country to essentially to, want to understand which kind of precedence you have in terms of the interpretation of how, how broad is the interpretation of this uh, simple picture um, a, a, a protection. I, I think that the, there is quite some, some hope that such a picture is in the public domain. Like uh, you may have a picture in the public domain, like, like orthogonal picture of, I don't know, spare parts for uh, uh, you know screws nails <laughs> a catalog of uh, items uh, these kind of, of things are typically uh, not corporate protected at all in certain countries or just protected as simple picture they, in my opinion for instance, in Italy this should be in the public domain but most people are a little bit uh, let's say scared of, of uh, assuming that they are in the public domain because there is some 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 leeway for for judges in, in, in interpreting what is actually a simple picture protected for for, for twenty years. For what it's worth, Commons I believe actually has a policy of explicitly accepting medical pictures. So like there's a policy on Wikipedia Commons saying it's okay to upload those. Uh, you do have to take account not of copyright but actually of patient privacy uh, with those kinds of pictures. So make sure that they're not um, you know by the matter like identifying some person who wouldn't want their medical information out, but obviously if it's a picture of yourself, then that's not a concern. Yeah, oftentimes like x-rays and stuff like that have names to all them, so they often could uh, pose the privacy of, of a patient. Um, so, uh, in order to you know avoid the problem that you, you might face uh, while taking pictures, it's always advisable to take multiple pictures from different angles, so you can avoid like logos and things in the background. Oftentimes, when you're taking pictures of a like a popular person speaking on a stage, uh, you might take pictures of the um, you know banners and stuff in the background, which might have a lot of logos. And even if that logo uh, is is more than twenty percent of the image, you might face a problem. So it's also advisable to Photoshop and blur such things in the background. Uh, the Commons oftentimes doesn't really encourage uh, Photoshop. Uh, so minimal Photoshop of things that you one blur would be really useful and then if you take from all angles maybe you know, if you take a, like a, a wide shot then you could probably crop it out later and then have just that person's photo so I often do that 
when I you know take pictures of people, I often take like a wide angle shot and then a, a, a close up shot. So from the wide angle shot, I normally crop, crop them. Uh, Wikicommons uh, has a tool itself uh, in, in itself to crop pictures. Um, that oftentimes helps a lot. Uh, otherwise, um, pictures might just get, get deleted, uh, even if not immediately, maybe a little later. Um, then um, the other thing is um, make sure that uh, you know you don't uh, take pictures deliberately of logos and uh, you know, names and stuff like that, which which might be uh, a copyright violation. For example, uh, 2D paintings uh, and signboards oftentimes are copyrighted in many countries. Uh, and if you're taking pictures of like say streets and those streets having signboards and signboards designed by artists. Uh, are copyrighted. So if you're just zooming in and then taking pictures of those signboards, they're all copyrighted. So, you know, taking wide angle shots, having other things and those signboards in them uh, can kind of can, can, uh, just uh, make sure that, you know, you don't take pictures of those things very closely. Um, so we talked about the ratio, you know, while, while taking pictures, make sure that, you know, the logos and the copyrighted uh, images or the probable copyrighted images are minimal in the entire image and not the whole thing in the image. Um, then in many countries 3D uh, objects are uh, copyrighted and in a few countries they are not. In many countries, in most countries 2D objects like paintings and frescoes, um, signboards, all of these are copyrighted. So uh, it's, it's ideally advised that you take those pictures but don't upload those pictures on comments. Um, then uh, the other thing is, um, it is always advisable to take uh, pictures of graphics and artworks and uh, photographs that are photographed by other people. Like in uh, in a few museums, they have uh, pictures of uh, artifacts which are displayed in the in the gallery, and those pictures might not be public domain images. Uh, those probably are recent pictures. And you should avoid taking pictures of those things. Whereas the artifacts themselves are not really uh, not copyrighted. Um, so uh, you know, while, while visiting galleries and uh, museums, uh, try avoiding taking pictures of uh, of the images being displayed, the, the photographs being displayed. Uh, but if the if the year of the photograph is mentioned in the picture, then that that probably is a good idea to take those pictures which are uh, public domain already. So, as Wikimedia servers are there in the States, um, we kind of follow the United States, States uh, copyright laws and in the States it's 100 years after the death of the author or uh, 100 years after the work was created, which, whichever is, is earlier. 70. Uh, it's 70? 70. Yeah, but the 100 year terms is, is for, for corporation. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's, it's like the author plus 70 or uh, 95. Is it not it's not like a variable thing. Like for a few things, it's like seventy, and a few things for it's, it's hundred or something. It's not like in the United States, it's definitely like seventy. Okay. Now, can I clarify? Uh, you you said that uh, commons follow uh, U.S. copyright law. Yes. I think uh, because of well, all the media products. Uh, yes, all the media. Yeah. So, uh, for example, mm -hmm. fair use in US have more uh, broader definition of something, uh, but in a specific country, uh, they, they have um, more narrow definition of fair use. Uh, this country can use uh, better use fair use of US law, yes, US copyright law, and it will be something like um, eligible in uh, terms of working with Wikimedia projects, yes. Yes, uh, well, um, there are two things. You're right about the fair use. Yes. But uh, 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 in Italy, we do have this, this uh, strange law. It's, it's worth mentioning because uh, indeed you are all here in Italy, you may take picture of Italian cultural heritage. Uh, so uh, I, mean, I think it applies to, uh, to everybody here. Uh, Luckily enough, uh, uh, when you are in your country, this stuff is definitely in the public domain from the copyright point of, of, of view. And in copyright, it would matter at international level because, for instance, we are all members of the Berne Convention and, 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 and so on. In, instead, these national laws uh, are, are, are not uh, the object of uh, international agreements. So, uh, 
the, the interpretation that, that we are we are giving <coughs> is that if a foreign person is uploading that on, on Commons, which is not a, a project that they, with servers based in Italy and, and, and so on, this is outside of the reach of uh, Italian law. Instead, if you are Italian, uh, uh, the fact that you are using a VPN is just a circumvention of the, of the law, and in principle, he would not uh, exempt you. Of course, uh, they will not understand who you are if you use a nickname in a VPN uh, and, 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 and so on. But in principle, you are violating the law, you are circumventing it. So, uh, this is not uh, I mean, uh, suggest, uh, suggested also, behavior. Using a VPN actually makes you, uh, makes you acting in a bad faith. So it probably will give you, if they discover you, it will be even worse. Because you try to, to circumvent the law on, on purpose. But basically, on the other hand, we have some, some, some fair use things that can, uh, at least for the non-artist photographs. So like picture of someone uh, older than 20 years. So if it, if it has been published and it's been published according to the uh, right to speech, uh, like uh, if we take a picture of of this room and it's definitely not artistic. After twenty years, the copyright expires uh, according to Italian law, and so we can upload it directly on Commons. But still, Commons had some uh, some some difficulty in the past. They decided it wasn't really public domain, so they deleted it and then they reaccepted it and re-upload re all the. All yeah, the in principle, they come to the origin matters here. So so yeah, uh, yeah the, the maybe. Yeah, usually, and rightly so, uh, uh, wiki media projects in general are, let's say, quite conservative in the sense that they, they stay on the same side because uh, everybody wants to be to be sure that the, everything which is there can can be legally used, uh, let's say, essentially in every country of the world. So in, in certain cases, uh, uh, when you have uh, very specific and national e e exceptions, uh, maybe. If people on common do not agree about the fact that this is fine with respect to the rules of common, may, maybe in, in your own, uh, let's say, uh, linguistic edition of, of, of Wikipedia, you do have rules uh, similar to the, to the, to the <coughs> one I mentioned before, I'm saying that you, you can upload the picture just for a specific purpose, for a specific article in your specific uh, uh, linguistic version. How does, sorry, how does uh, Wikimedia feel about fair use images generally because it's all about sort of making images free to distribute surely. Uh, I was led to believe that fair use is something that you want to generally avoid. Yeah. Um, we had a sort of women in espionage uh, editathon and all, pretty much all the articles on these sort of female spies we couldn't we could only get fair use Images. <coughs> I didn't feel sort of very sort of okay with that because we couldn't sort of include those pictures on the project page, for instance, at all. Yeah. And also, in a sort of university context, there's a lot of logos on university pages that are on Commons, yeah. but they're they're logos of universities. So the university is not happy that they're free to be used, edited, and distributed. Yeah. And they, so they, this started a sort of conversation on the UK university sort of talk pages about should we be making uploading new images on a fair use basis to, to keep make sure that the universities are happy to have their logo distributed. Yeah. So I just, just wonder what the conversation is around fair use. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, also a lot of Wikipedia communities um, are discouraging fair use in general, and a lot of communities uh, have their own rules about the fair use, so there is no standard uh, Wikipedia law uh, or Wikipedia rule about a policy about fair use. So different communities, different language communities have their own um, policies about fair use. But yeah, in general, as you said, we should avoid um, you know, it's just fair use. Yeah. It's kind of like a better than nothing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. I mean, yeah. because the, the, it's most, in principle, all exceptions should be, let's say, narrow. So they, they, they are, I mean, designed as, as exceptions and, and limitations. Therefore, they are they may apply, uh, but uh, but just for certain purposes, uh, uh, for instance. Uh, so the, the context matters. So for instance, the logo of a university uh, is probably 
third be used in most countries of the world for some principle which may or not be called per, uh, per, uh, per use. Maybe may be it's a small article in trademark law, maybe may it's a small exception in corporate law, but in most countries of the world you may use a, a trademark or a logo even if this is both uh, copyright protected and or trademark uh, law protected, the register of trademark, for say illustrative purposes to talk about the, 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 the firm which is using that logo or talk about the, the university which is using uh, that, uh, that logo. But you, you cannot uh, use it for you know, artistic purposes somewhere else. Or in certain countries you may, but just, uh, I mean, uh, 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 for specifically expressive purposes, so it, it is just um, uh, a, a trademark you cannot use for commercial purposes uh, in the same market, but uh, you, you may produce a necklace with uh, uh, the, 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 the trademark uh, image as a pendant. So, uh, but these things are really depend on the purpose. So, since commons is a general purpose uh, re uh, uh, repository, uh, uh, it, it's, it's not a great idea to upload their stuff, uh, which is. Uh, usable just for a specific purpose. So yeah, it's not very convenient to re-upload it each and every time you may use it, but this is the, the, the safest uh, approach in the sense that uh, you, you make clearer that it is a purpose-bound uh, exception and not a, 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 a copyright-free uh, image, for, for instance. I have a big complex question. You said that uh, if a logo is a small part of the image uh, by percentage, uh, it would be not uh, considered as a copyright infringement. But uh, I often make photographs that are 500 megapixels in dimension, and you can easily, from a 10% crop, uh, make out, uh, I don't know, 10 megapixel, 20 megapixel image from a, from a logo or something that's copyright uh, material. So would it count as a copyright infringement if you can extract a high resolution piece from my image which is about five percent of the energy total. Well, that's that's again a violation of copyright. I mean, no, it's probably not. It's probably not a violation of copyright. Um, they're not looking at the ability to crop the photo or whether the photo is high quality. It has to do with the um, overall picture that's being taken. So if that little logo in the corner is in the background somewhere because you took a huge five hundred megapixel veranda of oh, okay. policy or something. The fact that your photo is so high quality that someone could crop it, that's not violating copyright because the actual picture, the logo is incidental to it. Somebody who did the crop would probably be violating copyright though. Oh. Because, for example, um, on the wiki expeditions we do, I often uh, don't do panoramas where I can do them. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, because of that, because that panorama will, will include at least 15, 20, 25 logos from uh, from the picture, you, you would extract a uh, picture big enough to make a decent size print. Yeah, it's probably actually okay for you to do the large panorama, but then anybody who did that extraction would themselves be uh, occasioning the violation. So like, really, the like, use is a problem, but the big panorama where there's just lots and lots of stuff, if it's really clear from that big, and this is a funny standard, but like if it's really clear from that big picture that the logos are just incidental to you taking like that vista, it's very unlikely to be a violation of yeah, I, I, I fully agree. The key word is uh, in incidental. So if you are, if, 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 I mean, the object of your uh, reproduction is, is not the, the copyright protected stuff, but uh, you, you cannot uh, reasonably you take a picture. Yeah, I mean, you cannot avoid it because it's there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 exactly. So, I mean, uh, uh, copyright law can, 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 can not have the effect of uh, preventing you from taking pictures in general. Then, of, of, of course, I mean, the, the, here we also introduced the issue of uh, uh, panorama freedom, because the degree of, uh, let's say, incidental reproduction of uh, things as, such as buildings or statues, <coughs> this, this may, may vary de de depending on, on, on national law. But uh, if a small logo is uh, somewhere uh, in uh, the picture of uh, an entire street, I mean, uh, yeah, the perspective on, on a street, I, I, I think that nobody would... Uh, yeah, I was completed uh, because uh, which media uh, requires free for all usage, I mean, uh, free for commercial use and everything. If I uh, do the same on stock photography site, for example, they would require me to blur or remove every single logo in the image. So I was looking at uh, different laws to figure out 
uh, where is the problem here? And if, if I can do that on Wikimedia, because I know that those talk agencies have strict, uh, strict rules about uh, photographs in general. So uh, if it's not a copyright infringement, then that's great. Yeah. Um, also, it's, it's always uh, advisable to have some kind of description when you add a picture on Commons. So, you know, ex experts uh, on Commons can actually judge from those descriptions that if the picture is actually yeah. copyrighted or not. Well, that, that's okay. I mean, when possible, I do that, but sometimes I have uh, pictures in the amount of thousands. Oh, yeah. You yeah. like do those it's, it's impossible. Uh, detailed description on everyone. That's true. It yeah. will take months. Yeah, so if you're using something like Commonist, for instance, which uploads in a badge. Uh, yeah, I, like, I usually upload in a badge. I yeah. upload a uh, thousand photos of awesome. <clears throat> But if they're falling in the same category, in that case, you can have a common description for all and then add that description in all, yeah. all the images. Yeah, probably, probably I do that often on uh, specific images that, that's required, but oh, yeah. I do I would also suggest in that case, like, you can upload that full batch of photos and then if you know, then not all separately the ones that they describe. Well, there's one particular that concern you could do them separately. You could also just upload the batch, and then if somebody does, um, you know, start a deletion discussion about one of them, you can move that to that comments, right? Yeah. So, can the picture of this decorated, logo decorated uh, laptop, uh, can this be uploaded to Commons? Or um, do, do, you have, do I have to consider also the, is there an arran arrangement on the offer? Well, the arrangement is not definitely copyright because there is not creativity, a lot of creativity involved in that maybe. Mm -hmm. But the logos definitely uh, contains some images which are copyrighted and some are not, like the Wikipedia 15 for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that, that's definitely available in, in uh, CC uh, O license. But you know, if there is some logo um, that is copyrighted, it's definitely uh, an infringement. So you know, if that logo is containing like more than twenty percent of the image, of the whole image, that's that's copyrighted. So it's ideally good to take a bigger picture and blur blur those images to copyright it. Just to be clear, by the way, the percentage is actually not like a hard and fast rule. Yeah. It's like the rule that that they use on comments, as I understand, right? Yeah. Um, which is fine, and that, that's like a good rule of thumb, but. Um, Depend like the actual copyright law is there's no specific percentage. It's just that like is it the main part of the image or not? And would like a judge think it was the main part of the image? So twenty percent is like a good rule of thumb, but it's not like if, if you happen to decide like you take a photo, it's of a section of a room, and it happens to be twenty one percent rather than twenty percent. Like that doesn't mean you're out of luck. Mm. So does this does this mean that if I take a picture of a logo? And it's clearly that I target the logo and it's still below, so in that case, that wouldn't be allowed. Yes, it goes the other way yeah. too. If you, yeah. if you like, took a picture where you're clearly taking a picture of the logo as the focus, it's small, yeah. still but there's like other stuff around it, um, that could be a copyright. Yeah. Sure. So. Yeah, so, so the, the, the keyword there is really, is the, the logo yeah. incidentally within the picture? You're not taking the, the picture of a logo, you're taking the picture of something, and you cannot avoid the fact that there are yeah. logos everywhere. So, yeah. and then of course, you have a rule of, of, of thumb in, in order to have, uh, I mean, an easily applicable uh, process uh, on, on Congo. It's, it's the same thing about uploading something with a VPN. So it's, uh, it's, all, uh, it's all good faith versus bad faith. If you take, as I say, as we said, if we take a, a photo of this of this room and there might be some Oracle or some uh, Apple logos, well, that's it. I mean, we, we can't avoid it. But if we cross that particular, okay, that's you know, that goes uh, our good way. And, and by the way, if you crop uh, the, the the HP logo there and you use it just on the page about HP to illustrate the logo, that is probably fair. But yeah. you shouldn't re-upload the, just the logo on common. So. Uh, or use it for commercial book. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions for or anything to discuss? Um, you one of us uh, mentioned about your TRS, right? Uh, was it you? No, uh, okay, yes. Um, so what, what exactly you want to ask about or discuss about what TRS? Well, I sometimes find it's a little bit it, it's a little bit weird. Yeah. You know, it's there, but, but when when exactly does someone need to file ODRS and when not? Okay. Uh, 
Um, well, um, you know, we can look at examples. Uh, if you are uploading someone else's work, um, uh, for example, if you're um, say there's a content donation, it got books relicensed uh, from copyright to CC by SA, and then you're uploading those books uh, on behalf of the author, and then you know you have something in written from the author, uh, specifically saying the signature and date. Um, that you can upload uh, on its behalf, on his or her behalf, um, and uh, and in that case, you have to send uh, OTR as an email, uh, basically a scanned image of the um, of the you know uh, permission letter, or ideally the author herself or himself yeah. should be sending that to OTRS, uh, and you should be helping them with that. Uh, probably they could uh, CC you with the email. Um, that kind of clarifies that this person is kind of authorized by the original author to you know, do changes and stuff later. Um, uh, well, there are multiple um, cases um, of, of OTRs. Uh, is there anything specific that you want to um, ask? Uh, well, one, one of the things that I noticed, um, I do a couple of clan corporations. Um, and in some cases, they've been some of these institutions have been doing sort of mass uploads in the past. They got an OTRS ticket for that. Yeah. Um, and I haven't seen the tickets myself, but as I understand it, the same ticket has been used since for well, future for uploads. Okay. Is that something that's possible, or is this something that's just been used and no one ever bothered to, to check it, you know, check it out, or so, are this? I mean. This is, I'm not sure, I, I'm not part of the OTRS team, so I can't look into these tickets, but yeah. then, is this possible, this kind of... Well, as far as I know, uh, I think it's uh, it's just one ticket um, per uh, upload, or if there's a batch of things that is me that are mentioned in the same email, that probably would be qualified for um, OTRS, the same ticket for all the uploads. For example, say if you're uploading a PDF, um, based books uh, which are relicensed and then you're uploading them together and all the books uh, and their names and dates and uh, dates of uh, publish publication are mentioned in the email that probably uh, would qualify for the same uh, ticket but otherwise uh, it should be a different ticket for different images or files. Yeah. Uh, I mean you have comments on, on, on these uh, in, in, in yeah. general. Uh, I, I was just I was wondering about that. Um, if you look at sort of your average upload by a museum of say old paint, uh, old paintings, and the sort of the image paintings are in public domain, it's like a seventeenth century painter or something. Um, but what exactly would be the status of the metadata that yeah. are added by the museum? Say that they sort of add an extensive description of the yeah. of painting techniques and stuff. Um, if if they want this sort of license under under a CC BY um, license, would that mean that it couldn't be added to to Wikidata or or how does it work exactly? Yeah, this is why I raised the question. <laughs> yeah, so that uh, because uh, um, I think that the, uh, the current and probably correct uh, 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 application of. Uh, uh, I'd say the, the, the wiki the, the community is yeah. that uh, if you you have for instance some metadata under CC BY, you you cannot upload them uh, on 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 Wikidata. Um, of course, I mean the CC BY license by itself does not actually guarantee that the, the data are somehow. Let's say copyright or right well, no. for, for, uh, protected because <coughs> if you can argue that uh, despite the presence of a CC BY license, this stuff is already in the public domain. Uh, of, of course, uh, the, the CC BY license explicitly uh, provides uh, for a, a close statement. If something is already in the public domain, CC BY is not creating new rights. It's yeah. not a term of use on top of so. So if something is already in the public domain, it will remain in the public domain. I, I am mentioning this because in certain cases it may happen that somebody is applying to CBI just in case because they would like to have attribution, but they cannot claim attribution under corporate or related rights. But the, the normal situation, for instance, in Europe, in, 
is that uh, on, uh, let's say, on, on things that you can reasonably call a database and in which there is a, a significant in investment in terms of effort or money. So, for instance, uh, on the, the set of metadata from a museum collection, there's definitely quite a lot of effort and money involved there. And even if maybe just uh, some uh, small parts are created and corporate protected, let's say there is a, a, a long description of the work. Yeah. This is, uh, I mean, uh, 20 lines of text. Uh, this is uh, a copyrighted uh, text, let's say. But then you also have, uh, let's say, measurements, numbers, uh, accession dates, what, whatever. So but what would happen if you would if you would extract the text from that description. You could potentially do that. So I was going to suggest that. Right. Like you can't actually copyright factual or historical information. All right. So, so like if there's a long description that is copyrighted, you can't copy that exactly. But if it is like, if you just take things like the painting was painted in this year and yeah, because the style is called whatever the that's style is, right? You would do in Wikipedia, right? Right. Yeah. So that could probably be taken because yeah. those individual right. things can't be copyrighted. And as long as you're not copying the entire long description verbatim, you, you haven't right. actually violated it. And, yeah, and it's I, just about I, using the need description as a source. What's that? It's just using the description as a source. So if you copy the description, you, you still be violating copyright law, right? That's, but if you have that as a source and you don't actually copy it, you just look at it and then extract We extract the just the data and then we say, yeah. Yeah. this is the source for every data. Yeah. 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 So that's probably not... Uh, that's probably okay. It's probably yeah. not. Yeah. 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 Cited them. Hmm? Would you need to cite it? The, the, the original text where you got well, it? No, um, no, you would want to because yeah, exactly. you know, Wikipedia is oh, yeah. On Wikipedia, you <laughs> want to cite that. Yeah. But the, 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 the paradox there is that it's a little bit easier to be sure of what you can do with the, the long text, in the sense that you cannot fully copy it, but you can extract the data. Uh, if you are in uh, in Europe and you are extracting some data from a data set, I mean, I mean you, you, you have a dump of the data base of the, 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 the catalog in a broad sense of the museum, and you want to extract the fields which are already structured fields, which are already data, there, maybe in the US you can, uh, you, you, you can do that. In, in, in Europe, uh, it's really sure that there is a, a layer of uh, database rights, the so-called sui generis database rights, which that means special sui generis database rights. And, and, and this, uh, this stuff is pretty much uh, limiting your, your freedom. You can extract a single datum. So if you are interested just in one work and you extract just a single datum, you can do that and you can upload that with that. But if you want to do a, a bulk uh, upload on, on Wikidata, from uh, the catalog of the, of, of the mu museum, and you reasonably think that this is a uh, database uh, right protected. Um, if you are based in Europe and all the servers are, are in Europe, uh, you, you, you cannot do that. Now, we, which is effective, but still, I, I don't think that there are alternative. Um, uh, interpretation of the law. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, in Italy, we, we had some, some problems with uh, uh, some, some data from the National Statistical Office. I mean, uh, it's, it's not the, the National Statistical Office that complained, it's just a it's the, the discussion which went on on, on the Wikidata mail, mail list uh, uh, and, 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 and online fora about the uh, uh, whether it, it was uh, possible to uh, upload, for instance, the, the population of all Italian uh, municipalities uh, from uh, a deduction which was available under uh, CC, CC BY license. Uh, and in that case, at a certain point, the, the user which created the, the bot, which was uploading, uploading the data, decided that he was not sure, uh, actually was quite convinced that it was not possible at the end, and so he deleted the data himself, so we, 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 we didn't have any interaction with the National Statistical Office, which is a pity because I, I think they would have accepted to relicense everything under CC, I mean, at least that small data under CC0, but we, we, we do have a, 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 an issue there in terms of things which may feed uh, uh, Wikipedia, 
may feed uh, DBpedia as a project uh, using the same uh, the same license, uh, but probably cannot feed uh, Wikidata. Uh, so this is a, I think a, a domain which uh, we will uh, will face some uh, some interesting new new issues. And unfortunately, in Italy, we sorry, if I always talk about our project like that. Sorry, really sorry. Anyway, it's in, unfortunately in our country, CC BY is really used for uh, any data sets, for all data sets. Even the Chamber of Deputies, the Italian Senate, uh, use CC BY probably the 3.0, not even the 4.0. So the license without the sui generis waiver. And uh, well, uh, and they only uh, they, and they do this because they want still to keep a bit of a, of a control about their data sets and they want to be sure that they are cited as a source and that they are uh, and that, that nobody uses it for uh, wrong for the wrong reasons which I find them difficult to find it. and and then we have also another license which is fairly the same of the of CC BY. So basically, CC zero is really unpracticable here, and still, this is a problem. Okay. Great. Anything else? Anyone? Can I have just one proposal? Um, we have we're now fighting uh, for freedom of panorama in Ukraine, and uh, uh, maybe it can be. Uh, Interesting for someone, uh, for other communities who are fighting for uh, freedom of panorama, to exchange contacts and to have uh, some Skype once per month, maybe, and to exchange uh, the trends, uh, some effective or and uh, not effective um, tools which we are using, and I guess that we can uh, improve our chances uh, in each communities. If somebody is interested, I would be happy. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, we are also in Okay, let's just make a Yeah, just, just as a kind of information about this, I guess you are aware of the ongoing debate in France, uh, which is, which seems to be going the direction of, uh, let's say, non commercial freedom of panorama, which is not enough probably for, 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 for certain purposes, but still. Uh, also, in, in Italy, I, th I think there is a, a table management to cooperate law about that with uh, um, relatively low chances of being approved. Uh, for certain countries, uh, in particular Italy, Turkey and Greece, uh, uh, there is also this uh, interesting and paradoxical interaction between, uh, say, general uh, freedom of, of panorama properly said uh, and uh, uh, this cultural heritage uh, laws. For instance, in, in Turkey, as, as far as I understand, uh, they, they may have freedom of panorama, but they do have some uh, specific laws about uh, cultural heritage, which, uh, at least within museums and, and so on, uh, create a kind of uh, special copyright for, for cultural heritage goods. I, I'm not sure about the interpretation for cultural heritage goods uh, which are visible from the, the public street. Uh, in Italy and Greece, for sure, we do have a, a, a limitation. So we have both a, 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 a copyright and cultural heritage law limiting the freedom of our own. If no one else has any questions, we could probably officially close it right now. And all right. enjoy your lunch. And also thanks uh, to Jim Parker on the English Wikipedia who actually proposed this initially and then for the organized joint later. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get a scholarship to come to Wikimania, so we are kind of presenting on his behalf. Uh, but he's the initial man. So thanks to him.